to solve simultaneously to find points of intersection, my two functions, of course, are sine x and cos x. So I'm going to say, to find points of intersection, I'm going to solve sine x equals cos x. Okay. Now, at this point, you're like, hmm, definitely have not done these for a while. How am I going to find the points of intersection here? Well, you've got two trig functions, and uh, the, the easiest thing to make this, the thing to do to make this easiest to solve is to turn two trig functions into one. What's the way I can combine sine and cosine? Think about the identities that you know to turn these two trig functions into one. Maybe your brain is ticking along and you've recognized what I can do to both sides is I can divide through by cos x, okay? Now, when I do that, on the left-hand side, sine divided by cos by definition is 10. And on the right-hand side, I just get one. Now, don't forget, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm solving this in a particular domain. So it's from naught to two pi. So in order to solve this, you've got two alternatives. Number one, you can think back to your exact values if you know them well enough, or if you're kind of um, in a hurry and you can't remember those, you can use your calculator to help you out. Your calculator will only tell you one of the solutions, um, but from that we can work out the other one, remembering that I'm expecting two. Um, I'm expecting um, this guy over here and I'm also expecting this guy over here. All right, so uh, what's gonna happen? Well, I know from my, um, from my knowledge and my uh, familiarity with the exact values that the one I'm looking for here is pi on four. You might remember that better as 45 degrees. 10 to 45 degrees is one. Um, you can get that from this triangle, which you might recall. Uh, this is the one, one root two triangle. So it's right angled and it's isosceles, meaning you've got pi on four, pi on four in the corners. So 10, of course, is opposite on adjacent. So if you were looking at either point of view, um, the opposite on adjacent will give you one. Um, if you're like, okay, I was in a hurry and I didn't know, remember how to do that, right? Reach for your calculator and what you want to do, making sure that you are in radians, is if you go uh, shift 10 of one, it's going to hand you back a weird looking decimal, but um, you know that's going to be in terms of pi. So if you multiply by four, you get 3.141592, etc. So you got pi there. Um, so if you wanted, if that was a bit difficult for you, you could put it in degrees, right? And if I shift that over right now, uh, let's do this. If I go that shift 10 inverse of one, um, it'll give me 45 this time, right? So maybe that's a better way for you because you don't have to try and get rid of the pies. So pi on four, there's the first solution, but I know um, I need another. Now, um, what's handy is I can see that pi on four does match. In fact, my freehand sketch was good enough that you can see pi on four is smack bang halfway between zero and pi on two. So thumbs up for that graph. But where is this other one? Where am I going to find it? Now, my tip for you here is that you'll need to remember that tan x, which is what we're dealing with down here, right? Tan x, like all, every other trigonometric function, is periodic. It repeats every, now you have to think about how often it repeats. Sine and cosine repeat every two pi. That's why on my graph, I've got one full cycle of each, but tan x repeats more frequently than that. Its period is only pi, uh, one pi, I should say. So if I have a solution at pi on four, then I also have a solution pi radians later, which is five pi on four. Now it's worth mentioning, that's not the only way to get these two solutions. If you wanted, um, you could have gone for the all stations to central alternative. Uh, and we worked out that the first solution pi on four is this uh, in the A quadrant, in the first quadrant. And then the second quadrant will be down here in the third quadrant, which is five pi on four, because I've got 10 X being positive, which is in your first quadrant and your third quadrant. So either of those ways to get your solutions is fine. All right, so now I've got uh, pi on four over there in the top left-hand corner, and then my five pi on four is over here. And uh, if you think about it, five pi on four is one and a quarter lots of pi, which shouldn't surprise us because there's pi right there. So five pi on four, I should say x equals five pi on four, will just be a little bit past pi. Okay, take a breath. I've just spent some time to work out these points of intersection. Why did I do that? It's so that I can evaluate the area so I can work out my lower and upper bounds. Now, if you have a look carefully, um, I do have three areas here, right? I've got, and I'm just going to call them um, A1, like I have been. Um, we'll call this guy A2, and then you've got A3 over on the left, uh, on the right hand side. 
<coughs> excuse me, I should say. So A1, A2, A3, let's deal with each one in turn. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, duplicate this graph just so we can have it uh, close to where we're doing our working down below, uh, over here, and I'll just make it a bit smaller because we don't need it to be enormous. I wanna be able to see it though so I can work out from um, where I'm gonna start and end each integral. Okay, so I'm gonna work out A1 is going to be, now think about it carefully, I'm gonna start from naught, and then I'm gonna to go to that first point of intersection which I found at pi on four. For this part of the graph, it's gonna be green take away blue, which is cos take away sine. So here comes the integral, cos x minus sine x. And that's with respect to x, there's A1. A2, the next one over, um, I, it takes over at pi on four, it goes all the way to the second point of intersection, which we said was five pi on four. And this time I'm doing blue take away green. So this is sine x take away cos x with respect to x. The last one is A3, which takes over at five pi on four, and then it ends at the very end of the domain, which in the question was defined as two pi. And then we return like A1 to cos being on the top and sine being on the bottom. Okay, now, at this point, uh, I'm gonna pause because um, I could naturally just start integrating and then start evaluating, um, and I will get the answer. I'll show you that a bit later on. But as in many cases, um, if we do a bit of thinking here, we can actually help ourselves out um, and make this uh, question, especially the evaluation of all of these integrals, um, a lot easier for ourselves. Here's the way you need to think about this. Um, you've got all of this symmetry within these trigonometric functions. A lot of things are equal to each other and maybe you've recognized that already. Um, for instance, if you have a look over here at A1, um, I'm just going to take this section over, oh, I'll get rid of this for a second just so it's not in the way. I'm gonna take this section over here of A1. I'm just gonna copy that because I wonder if you've noticed, zoop, copy. I wonder if you've noticed that it actually fits onto another part of the graph. If I just paste this as an image over here, you can see on the right hand side of the graph, and we should have predicted this because sine and cosine are of course periodic functions, this A1 fits exactly onto the end of A3. If our you know, domain had continued past 2 pi, um, this is what the rest of the uh, areas would look like. Now. When you look at this combined A3 plus A1, the pink area now, I'm just going to uh, get rid of um, this one on the left-hand side since I'm kind of, whoops, that's too big. I'm just considering over there on the right-hand side. So let's just get rid of this one since I've sort of moved it over. Okay, um, what have I got here? Well, A2, the yellow area, and A1 plus A3, which is the pink area, they look suspiciously alike. In fact, they're not suspiciously alike. They are exactly equal to each other, but there's a, a horizontal reflection that's happened there. So in fact, I can say that A2 is exactly equal to A1 plus A3. So in order to work out the total area, which is A1 plus A2 plus A3, what I can really do is I can just say, well, just work out one of those areas, either the left-hand side, or the right hand side and then just double it. Once you've done that, you've got all three combined together. Let me just say that one more time. Um, if I want A1 plus A2 plus A3, then what I can say is, because this is the total area, if A2 is equal to, uh, let's highlight it, A1 and A3, we had them in pink, then I'm just gonna substitute A1 and A3 for another A2 that will give me my total area. And clearly that's gonna be an easier thing to evaluate than all three altogether. Um, and I'd rather pref I'd prefer to evaluate one integral rather than two integrals um, because that's just less work for me to do.